Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on neural fiber mitosis. I'm going to cover both type 1 and type 2 and just give you an overview on what's going on with the genes involved as well as the presentations. So let's talk about them both together under this both section here first. So these are considered neurocutaneous disorders. So let's break this word down. Neuro in, well, obviously means it involves nerve cells and cutaneous means that there is skin involvement. And we'll see that one, each of these tilt more towards one. So neurofibromatosis type two is going to be more involved with the neural aspect and NF type one is going to be more involved with the cutaneous aspect. They are both autosomal dominant diseases and they both involve tumor suppressor genes. So both the NF1 gene and the NF2 gene are involved as tumor suppressor genes. All right, let's go through them one by one. So I've just mentioned that the genes involved are NF1 and NF2 respectively. NF1 is located on chromosome 17 and NF2 is located on chromosome 22. So that's very easy to remember. 17 starts with one and 22 starts with two. Now, what are the protein products involved here? So with neurofibromatosis type one, NF1 codes for neurofibromin. And this protein binds RAS in the MAP kinase pathway. And it, it binds this RAS GTPase and inhibits it. And the MAP kinase pathway, if you're not aware, is a cell growth pathway. So if you inhibit the MAP kinase pathway by binding RAS, you're gonna stop cell growth. And if this gene is mutated, as in the case of neurofibromatosis type one disease, you're gonna get tumors because this tumor suppressor is not working as it should. In NF2 disease, we have Merlin protein, and this is a contact inhibition protein found in neural cells. So generally when we have a cell growing and it reaches another cell, you want it to stop because if you don't have this contact inhibition gene, you're gonna get growth on top. So cells are gonna start piling up and you're gonna get a tumor. All right, so Merlin contact inhibition, neurofibromin MAP kinase growth pathway. Let's talk about the presentations because the presentations for NF1 and NF2 do vary. So in NF1, we get skin presentations called cafe au lait spots. So if we look down here at figure F, it's this outline right here. So cafe au lait in French means coffee with milk. And that's generally the tone of this kind of depigmentation. So we're going to get excess pigment over here. Next, we have cutaneous neural fibromas, figure G. So these bumps are usually all over a patient's body. And these are not skin tumors. These are actually tumors of the nerve cells. So let's break this down a little bit. Neural fibromas. Neural fibromas are actually a type of... Um, nerve sheath tumor and that means that we are involving the myelin sheath and we have excess production of this sheath and inside the sheath we're going to get fibroblasts trapped there so that's where we get the fibroma name from next we have leash nodules so leash nodules are pigmented iris hematomas so what this hematoma is is excess pigment gathered inside the iris so the, inside the colored portion of the eye we have this excess pigment tumors so I don't know if you can see them, they're a little harder to see, but they're in there. And don't mistake hematomas for hematomas or gathering of blood outside blood vessels. Remember there's an R there, so this is a tumor type, not a gathering of blood. All right, and there's also optic gliomas and pheochromocytoma, which is associated with NF1. Optic gliomas are tumors of the optic nerve, so you can get, associate, you can get deficits in vision and pheochromocytomas are tumors in the adrenal gland where you have excess production of norepinephrine. So these people can be super excitable. All right, neurofibromatosis type two. What do we have in the presentation here? We have bilateral acoustic schwannomas. So bilateral means it happens on both sides and acoustic means it involves uh, the cochleovestibular nerve. So Cochleovestibular nerve is cranial nerve eight. So that's VIII. And this nerve is involved in transmitting the, both the balance and hearing signals from your inner ear. So we get schwannomas there, which means that this nerve's action is inhibited. So what's a schwannoma? It's actually very similar to our neurofibroma, except it's an excess, um, excess replication of our Schwann cells, which create our myelin sheath. So here we have a neurofibroma and here we have schwannomas. They're both nerve sheath tumors. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. 
Then we have juvenile cataracts, so that's the clouding of our lens of the eye. Meningiomas, which are the coverings of our brain and spinal cord, or our CNS. So they, they can get tumors in there, and these tumors are usually pretty benign. Uh, ependymomas, now these most people usually haven't heard of them. They are tumors in the ependymal cells, or the cells that produce CSF. So as you can imagine, if you have too much CNF, CSF, your intracranial pressure can go sky high, and that can cause a lot of problems. An easy memory trick to remember the NF2 uh, phenotypes is that it affects two ears, two eyes, and two parts of the brain. So NF2 affects 222. Two ears because bilateral acoustic schwannomas. Two eyes because you have two eyes and here we have juvenile cataracts. And two parts of the brain. So the brain coverings in meningiomas and the brain ependymal cells in ependymomas. Alright, so I hope this video helped you and I'll see you guys in the next one.